Lakeshore Presbyterian Church is going to lead us with the invocation. It will be followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. If you please stand. <coughs> you, Mayor Rep, City Manager Freed, and members of Council, it's certainly a privilege to be here to open your very important meeting with prayer. Let us bow in prayer. Almighty God, you have blessed this part of the world with a wonderful lake, great rivers, St. Clair River, Black River. You have blessed us with land that is rich. You have blessed us with people who love your land, want to do what is right as they lead <coughs> us, the council and the mayor, city manager, as we treat all people with respect and compassion. Lord, you have blessed us. Now may we fulfill our roles as we serve you this evening. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I'd like to call to order the meeting of Monday, October the 28th. If the clerk would please take the roll. Councilmember Archibald? Here. Councilmember Ashford? Present. Councilmember Beeden? Here. Councilmember Harris? Here. Councilmember Pemberton? Here. Councilmember Warden? Here. Mayor Rep? Here. You have the minutes before you from the regular meeting of October 14th. Is there a motion to receive and file? So, so moved. moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Is there any additions, deletions, changes? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes will stand as submitted. Uh, we'll move on to public comment. If there's anybody in the audience this evening who wishes to address the City Council either on something that's on the agenda or just under our jurisdiction, please come forward. Give us your name and address, and you have four minutes. Look around to see if anybody's coming, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully I wasn't the first, but I guess I'll <laughs> do it and get it over with. Um, I'm Scott Fleet, Donald Scott Fleet, my legal name, 2307 Woodstock Drive, Fort Huron. So, uh, Mayor and City Council, thank you for your time tonight. Um, as I said, my name is Scott Fleet. My business partner, Steve Ainsworth, is with me. We're excited to inform you that we're the new owners of the house at 1214 Lincoln. I was at the barbershop about a month back and there was some discussion about this house set for demolition. So after I left the barbershop, my curiosity got the best of me. I drove by the house <clears throat> and I uh, saw it was in pretty rough shape. But then I had this vision. I called Steve, my partner. I said, Steve, this house is in rough shape, but I think we can salvage this house. I don't think it, I don't, with our resources, I don't think that it has to go to the extreme of the demolition. So the other motive we had was our workers, it tends to slow down for us in the winter time. And that was going to give our workers some, some work through the winter. Plus we felt that it would take a large burden off the city. So in, in my mind, it was a win-win. <clears throat> So we do understand the city's prior decision to set this house for demolition. Based on the circumstances, it really looks like you were given no choice. The uh, previous occupant didn't have the means or desire to put this house in safe measures. And it doesn't sound like the lending institution was wanting to cooperate either. So I personally own three companies that are construction related two of which Steve and I are partners on. Steve's also a full-time electrician. Um, I have a degree in construction manager from Michigan State University. Don't hold that against me, <laughs> go Spartans. But um, we did buy the house outright. We have the means and the immediate funding to resurrect the house. Thus far, we've taken out two 30-yard dumpsters of foul debris from this house. We're in the process of cleaning up the yard. I know at the beginning there were some neighbors that approached us. Um, there was um, a lot of anxiousness, um, maybe a little bit of the fear of the unknown. 
as to what was going to become of the house. Um, we had a chance to talk to the neighbors um, about our vision, and especially on each side of the house, and they are on board with the vision of the house. They're happy to hear of the possibilities. So with the exception of the front porch, the house is structurally sound, it's fundamentally sound. Um, we plan on pulling all the necessary permits to resurrect this house. Um, with your permission to suspend the demolition agreement, we'll enter into a work agreement with the city and we plan on moving rapidly. Um, I've had a couple meetings now with uh, David Haynes and I've let him know of our vision. Um, I've kept him abreast of our progress. Um, I do plan on meeting with the Human Resources Department at the hospital. Part of our vision is that we could really try to turn this neighborhood, you know, you know a, a natural, maybe the beginning of a fresh start for the neighborhood. And I'd really like to cater this house to something that the hospital could utilize, whether it's a, an intern or just something that could just definitely be taken advantage of by the hospital. So I thank you for your time and I thank you for your consideration in the matter. Thank you. <clears throat> Is there anyone else in the audience? Hi, council members, esteemed Mayor Pauline Rep. I'm Catherine Duffy. I live in Fort Gratiot and am here to express my appreciation for uh, the consideration um, that you guys are going to give tonight to save the Huron Lightship. Um, it would be good if it didn't tool on down the river to Cleveland. Uh, we really appreciate um, we are do it, being the best stewards we can be for a, a piece of property that uh, we, we, all the people in the city, uh, own together. Um, and as a mariner myself, I, I, I can't tell you how grateful I am that you are considering uh, helping us save this very important artifact um, on the, the uh, St. Clair River. It's very historic. Um, all sailors uh, since 1939 have witnessed and been saved and been comforted by that boat as it was out in, on the Corsica Shoal, north of my house. Um, now it resides where everyone can learn about it and understand its significance to life-saving. Uh, it's very unique. A lot of people say that we have two lighthouses. We have one, as we know, where it sits, and we actually have a sec what we like to call the second one. So thank you for your generosity and your consideration of this very important piece of Fort Huron. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to address the council this evening? Good evening, council members and city administration. Sharon Bender, South Boulevard, Port Huron. I'm here also in support of several of the resolutions that are before <coughs> you tonight. In support of the Port Huron Museum's requests for help with the Huron Lightship. In support of the saving of a house so that people can occupy it and become a tax base for our city. city and in support of the issuance of general obligation limited tax pension bonds. I thank the city for the work on this. I thank you on behalf of myself and all of the other people who have come before me who are in retirement now. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to address the council this evening? Seeing no one, I'll declare public comment closed. We will move on to the consent agenda. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Council Member Ashford. We will take the vote. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes, a couple of items on there. Received and filed notification from the Michigan Liquor Control Commission on a couple of items. One, transfer ownership of an escrow, Class C license with Sunday sales and dance permit, and two bars from Antonio's Asi Investments to LLC to Andy Bacco, located at 104 First Street. And uh, Michigan Liquor Control uh, application 
They've received transfer ownership of the 2019 Class C and SDM licensed business with Sunday sale permit, outdoor service area, and two bars from Vintage Tavern LLC to Vintage Tavern Port Huron Incorporated on Michigan Street. Also adopted the 2020 Federal Poverty Income Guidelines and Policy for Granting or Denying Property Exemptions. Made permanent temporary traffic control orders 1366, which is Court Street Shell Stop for 7th Street. 1367 Union Street shall stop for 7th Street and 1369 which is Quay Street shall be designated one way eastbound from Huron Avenue to Fort Street. And those are the items on the consent agenda. We will move to from the city manager number one, please. Accepting the unit price bid from Watson Brothers in the amount of $7,080 for the required backflow preventer device testing services at various city owned properties for a two year period. Is there, I, oh, yeah, please. I would like to make one correction to the body of that resolution too. It's going to be paragraph five. We have that listed as Atchison Ventures, and it should be the Atchison Foundation. No, that was resolution. You're oh, still on this one. Oh. You jumped we're ahead. Good. That's okay. Oh, no, Forget good. what she said. That'll She'll say it the next, next time. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. From the city manager, uh, is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Pemberton, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there any discussion? Ma Madam Mayor, this we are legally obligated to do this. I mentioned at the last meeting we one of the issues are becoming operational with the threshold amount that hasn't been updated since the 60s, I believe, 70s. Um, this is one of those issues where you have no choice. You're legally obligated to do this, and we bid it out as uh, required per our ordinance. Mayor Rep. Yes, Councilmember Ashford. Okay, when it says in compliance, how long have we been out of compliance? We're not in compliance. We're not, we're not out of compliance. This is just for the next two years. Okay, so it was an amendment to the, the original act. Yeah. No, we do this every two years. We just, to maintain compliance, we have to do okay. this. Yep. Right. Any other discussion? Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member. Just one comment, just again, at least uh, with two bidders here and uh, um, uh, Watson Brothers, it looks like, right here in Port Huron, saving us. Uh, about $2,600 less than the other bid, so I appreciate that, and I support this, uh, this uh, uh, item. There's no other discussion. We'll take the vote. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Mayor Rep. Yes, we'll move on to resolutions number one. Approving the request from the Port Huron Museum to provide funding in the amount of $11,296 for the raising of the steel seawall adjacent to the Huron Lightship. Now you can now the correction. <laughs> <laughs> the so, correction she mentioned before just it did say Atchison Ventures and it should be Atchison Foundation within the body of the resolution itself. Oh, okay. Uh, is there a motion? So moved. Support. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald, supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there discussion? Madam Mayor, our engineering team stopped out and met with uh, the Executive Director, Veronica, and Andrew was out there as well. Um, I really need to thank the museum staff for doing all the legwork. Uh, this is a, a city asset, but it's very important to, to pr protect it. As you see from the photo, uh, the cutout there was designed so you could be out boating, and it kind of looked like the ship was floating, and you could see the bow of the ship, but with the high water levels, it's, it's quickly eroding. Uh, they did all the lead work. They worked, uh, reached out to uh, Thumb Welding, who we do a lot of work with. They're very capable uh, a firm to develop a solution. They also went out and fundraised $20,000 from Atchison Foundation to make this project uh, possible. So I want to thank Veronica and Andrew for doing the legwork and arranging the $20,000 donation from Atchison Foundation. It's nice to see the museum staff really uh, taking a lot of initiative since you guys have taken over, so I appreciate that. Um, we will take $11,296 out of the land purchase fund to, to match that uh, funding to, to facilitate the contract, to raise that retaining wall. It's going to be steel all the way across. They're going to weld it, raise that steel up. And the, the trick is we need to get it done now before ice starts flowing. There's some lead time on the material. Uh, so again, thank you to the Ashton Foundation for really stepping up to protect that asset. And thank you for the museum staff for showing the leadership to get this project off the ground in a quick timeline. Yeah, yes, Councilmember Ashford. Yeah, do they anticipate any more problems with this? We believe, um, based on what the engineers have said, that this should solve the problem. But I'm, I'm sure probably in the spring we're going to have to come back and backfill some sand in there as well. Yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions, discussion? Mayor Rep. 
Yes, Councilmember Harris. Just a comment, you know, you look at, at our announcements at the end of this meeting here, and, and I think it reflects back to this issue with the, the lighthouse boat and stuff, and I guess I kind of repeat what uh, Anita just said here, is, is that we want to make sure we do the job right. The water levels are going up, and if we have a tough winter, it's even going to be worse, and I just want to make sure it's done adequate enough, so it's... Uh, It'd been nice to see an underground, underwater picture of it, but I think that we really have to secure that. And, and if it causes us to even revise our decision to go another foot higher, I think we have to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? I'll we'll take the vote. Mayor Rep. Uh, Sorry. Council Member Warden. Yes, sir. Um, again, I want to appreciate uh, the, uh, the representatives of the museum um, take an initiative here and also thank, of course, uh, Atchison Foundation. Um, you know, this is, like they said, this is part of the history. It's on display there. Um, and to, to have this uh, vulnerable <laughs> with these pictures with the high water level, um, you know, it's, it needs to be done. It needs to be done quickly. And uh, um, to try to, you know, I guess pre pre prevent even some more future uh, damage here. So. Um, I do appreciate that. I will support this, and I think you know to to keep something that's put there. There's a lot of people that use that. Kids, you know, they used to. Uh, I know I've been there where there was uh, rented for a, a birthday party for young kids. It's just they get exposed to a little history while uh, getting to walk around that ship. I don't know if they still do those things, but it's just a great little thing for our community. Thank you. I will be supporting this. Thank you. We will take the vote. Council Member Beaden. Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? <coughs> yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. We'll move on to item two. Approving the suspension of the demolition order for 1214 Lincoln Avenue to allow the current property owner to make the necessary repairs. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Archibald supported. No, no. Uh, <laughs> boy, you two do sound alike. Uh, and supported by Councilmember Pemberton. Uh, do you want to explain? Yeah, um, Madam Mayor and Council, at our last council meeting, uh, you were left with no option because no party was coming to forward to address the issues at this property, the health and human safety issues, the structural defects and the issues. Um, since that time, the bank uh, quickly sold off the parcel. Um, although I do have issues with the bank handled it, that's not a reflection of you all in any way. Um, the bank did violate our ordinances on several occasions throughout the process. Um, however, we now before us have a party which is incredibly capable and has the, the capital necessary to bring this home back. Uh, it is the goal of the city at any time when a property can be saved and we have parties willing to save a property and invest in a property that we do so. We've been in similar situations. The city council addressed a similar situation in 2013, almost an identical case. Uh, became for the council, neither party involved wanted to address the issues, and then a third party stepped in to address the issue. So there is precedent set for this. Um, so what we'll be voting on tonight is you will suspend your demolition order. Uh, David Haynes will negotiate a work agreement with them to bring that property up to compliance, and then we'll bring back another resolution to take away the, the demolition as a whole. I want to thank you for addressing this property and bringing a, a very sound plan, because um, no one else was coming to do it. So thank you. How long is the work agreement for? As long as we, we can negotiate that, right? Yeah, as long as they need. So will we get the work agreement? Yeah, we'll send it out as soon as it's done. You want to come and talk about it, David, or do you? Yeah. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, the work plan entails the details that were discovered by each of the trade inspectors that went through the house. They identify what areas need to be uh, repaired and corrected. Uh, we then uh, create a list of those activities that need to be uh, uh, completed to bring the house up to code. We also uh, attach milestones and, and timelines for each one of those. Um, the exterior is going to be the, uh, the most important given the weather that we have. Uh, so we have a 30-day window uh, for that activity. Uh, we then uh, start addressing some of the interior issues and we'll have a 45 day and a 60 day uh, timeline uh, to complete those as well. So depending on what work is required, we have uh, different estimates of time of when uh, those are to be completed. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions for David while he's up there? 
Mayor Rapp. Yes, Council Member Harris. I, I guess my question is, is you know, we, we were brought to, to us here and, and we got an inside look of what the, the place looked like. And the, the gentleman here at night basically have a vision. Well, I don't know. It's, it's going to be a tough decision to make for the simple reason uh, it, the, the building was quite bad. And I think it's going to take more innovation. I think it's going to take strict rules to bring it back to make it suitable. So uh, I will be voting for it with the fact that we are going to hold them to the, the wire and, and do it right. So thank you. Well, it's a rare case that you have uh, uh, a contracting company coming forward with the capability uh, to not only accomplish the work, but also accomplish it, um, it you know, within a certain budget. You know, they're doing it for their costs, whereas if you and I were doing this, we would be doing it at even a higher cost to, uh, with profit. So they're able to do it at a scale and scope that a normal individual can, could not uh, uh, accomplish. Uh, and also having the expertise of uh, knowing what they're looking at and, and knowing what needs to be done to be corrected. Yeah, just as a backup comment, I, I guess the, the fact that as, business, as busy as what everybody is in the general contracting business, uh, I, th I think it's it's going to be a task to keep them online, and I hope we can do that. So thank you. Anyone else have any questions for David? Mayor Rapp? Yes. Council Mayor Pro Tem. David, you mentioned all the different timelines, 30 days, 45, 60. Do you have a deadline for final completion? I know you'll be working that out, but, I mean, are we looking at three months, six months, two years? Uh, we are looking... The bulk of the work should be completed by the end of the year. Some of the exterior work and roofing, we might have to push off until uh, uh, maybe even the spring, uh, depending on how the timeline is and what they're able to accomplish and how quickly. Thank you. Any other questions? Mayor Rapp. Yes, Council Member Gordon. Um, I printed off the, uh, the, the packet here, and that was one of my questions. Number one, I want to thank uh, uh, somebody from the community that sees an opportunity, steps up, and is going to take that that risk on um, to uh, the betterment of our community. So good luck uh, to you guys uh, for doing that. When I was reading through this, I appreciate also uh, from City Manager Freed and, and uh, or I'm sorry, from David, uh, the Interdepartmental Communication you attached with it, gave a nice time, timeline here, which really helped me out and helped uh, the rest of us out with the, with the process. It does, at least my, my version said that they're, um, you know, it has a certificate of occupancy issued within 90 days of execution. Is that, uh, uh, th that's something that I want to make sure if they're going at it um, you know, as best they can, I think we should be a little flexible on that. Uh, um, I don't know if that's still in this resolution that I'm looking at here, the wording, um, paragraph four. structures it says certificate of action is issued within 90 days of execution I just want to make sure that we with the weather and and if they're moving ahead you know, that that uh, we need to be flexible if they're if we're seeing adequate progress we're willing to work with the contractor uh, the end goal is completion yeah. uh, but if there are uh, issues coming up that are beyond their control um, you know we're not going to be obstinate we're, we're going to try to work with them but at the same time making sure we have the assurances in place that uh, um, that we're going to have a completed project uh, in, in the appropriate time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because sometimes, like you said, weather <laughs> around here, sometimes we get some crazy weather in the winter that uh, we need to be uh, understanding of that. So I'm, uh, I'm in full support of this. I uh, appreciate the, uh, the effort. Um, and again, uh, as they invest their time, energy, and, and progress in this, uh, as long as they're they're doing what they're saying I think we should make sure that we, uh, we we do give them that little leeway if they're getting close thank you yes council member yeah. Ashford yeah David um, uh, in concurrence with the, uh, the city manager you know how the bank you know oversight and went and did that it is certainly um, <clears throat> spells really that it's no clear pathway in terms of the process do you plan on doing anything different uh, moving forward when we have uh, issues such as this in demolition? I mean, how, how can we go about correcting that? Well, we try to not only contact, the, obviously, the property owner and trying to work with them you know, <laughs> to resolve the issues, um, but in this, also in this case when we had a lender involved who uh, was essentially uh, um, uh, 
Ms. Gardner was the, the third land contract on this property. Uh, this group had gone through and um, quit claimed on all of the prior. Uh, so the, unfortunately, this, uh, this type of practice is not unusual to see where you have somebody lending and they're quickly flipping properties. Uh, as soon as the, uh, uh, the parties are not able to pay, they, they do a quit claim back to the uh, main lender and then they just repeat the same process. Um, for us was getting in contact with the lender, making them aware of what the issue, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the issue is before us and, and seeing if they're willing to step forward to resolve it as well. When no party came forward to uh, correct this situation, unfortunately we have to act uh, for the safety of the neighborhood. Um, going forward, it's all about communication. Um, it's all about getting in, uh, getting the contact with the banks and with uh, any of those involved, in, <coughs> including you know, obviously the property owners. Because right. I can see ourselves going, you know, here you got a council making decisions based on what they have, that's all we had. And then you have another transaction over there taking place where they're doing something else with the property and it gets kind of like, don't look too good, you know, for us to be in that. Position. One of the things I'll say is this was no fault to David's office. You bring up a, you're, you are correct in the optics. Right. The bank. Well, let me tell you, I'm not faulting his yeah, office. No, no, I know. The, the, okay. the, the bank, yeah. and this is no reflection on you in any way, the bank has numerous complaints with the Attorney General's office. I wouldn't even say yeah. this is a, yeah, I wouldn't even say this is a legitimate bank. Um, if, there, if, you have, if you have a lending institution that's willing to violate the law, uh -huh. there's numerous steps that they were supposed to take in compliance with the law. They did not do so. Um, but that's the kind of bank that lets the property get in this condition anyways. Yeah. Uh, so from that end, uh, we will be very be more diligent cool. of this lending institution out of East Lansing. Yeah, but I am thankful that someone did step up. And if you can save something, do that. So it was very, very much appreciative. Anybody else? Just to clarify, that bank is no longer any involvement in this property, right? Correct. Yeah, that, that's what I got out of this. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Mr. Fleet and Mr. Ainsworth, for your investment in this, because we certainly do like to see the properties brought up to snuff and put back on the tax rolls. So thank you very much. We will take the vote. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council <clears throat> Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item three. Requesting the Michigan State Tax Commission revoke industrial facilities exemption certificate 2014-136 issued to Royal Oak Boring for real property improvements as the company has ceased productions at the facility located at 2340 Dove Street. Is there a motion? So moved. Support. Councilmember Pemberton supported by Councilmember Ashford. Is there any discussion? Madam Mayor, this is just housekeeping. The company filed bankruptcy, uh, I believe, several years ago but the auditors require you to do this to get it off the books. It didn't cost us anything. We didn't lose any money. So legally, we have to have this off the books. So this is just housekeeping. Good. The good news is there's a new company in there operating just fine. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> any questions? Well, just a comment, but thank God for contracts that we're yep. always covered. Yes. So we, we, we took this on in good faith and they did what they can, but we had written up that we could you know, come in there and uh, still come out a win-win. I think it's very important that people know we don't give away tax breaks. No. People have to earn them and commit to them with written contracts and commitments. Right. Amen. <laughs> Mayor Rep. Yes, Council Member. Just Horton. one other comment. You know, um, you know, we looking back, I wasn't on council with this, but reviewing the documents from there, you know, it's uh, you always want the best for uh, for a company that their their um, their intentions and. And uh, you always want them to, to be able to succeed as well. Um, but again, this was uh, something that came up and looks like 2016 where they had to lay off and cease, cease operations. So, you know, um, well, I, I have no problem with getting this thing uh, uh, back, uh, back cleaned up as far as the documentation of this uh, facilities exemption certificate. Anything else? We'll take the vote. Council Member Pemberton? Yes. Council Member Warden? Yes. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. Item six.
authorizing issuance of general <coughs> obligation limited tax pension bonds. Is there a motion? So moved. Mayor Pro Tem Archibald. Support. Supported by Council Member Pemberton. And I wonder if you could just give yep. us a quick synopsis, please. Madam Mayor and Council, this is very similar to any other bonds you have done, water and sewer bonds. Um, it's structured the same way. The only difference is it's for $53 million for general obligation bonds to be used for the refinancing of our unfunded pension liability. Uh, this is the last authorization for the bonds. The next will be we'd have to begin uh, ratifying uh, potential collective bargaining agreements uh, that allow us to close the system so the state treasurer will approve the final authorization of bonds. So it'll go from here to we're all set on the bonding side. Now it goes to compliance, meaning we have to close our, we have to come to agreements with our, with our collective bargaining groups. We have to bring those agreements to council. Those agreements must be ratified by council and the membership. And then that with this goes to the state treasurer with our comprehensive financial plan for final authorization of, of, of bonding, which we would envision market, we would go to market sometime in, in February. But that timeline changes as it changed before. So depending on how long it takes to get our collective bargaining agreements in place, depending on how long it takes for the state treasurer to get our application and to decide to open it and take action on it, it could sit in Lansing's desk for a few months. So we, you know. Any questions, discussion? So this is just, Mayor Rep, so this is an another piece of my preparation. This is another. Thing that's Correct. So you will have full, after tonight, I will be authorized that if mm -hmm. everything is done with the collective bargaining groups right. and if the state treasurer approved that I am authorized to begin the process to go to market with $53 million. So it still comes back to us. The collective bargaining groups will come back to you. Um, but after those, then the, the train's leaving the station. But on the same schedule as, it, as you laid out, except for anything. Correct. <coughs> yes. Any other questions, discussion? Mayor Rep. Council Member Harris. You know, when, when I looked at this today and I, and I jumped back to uh, looking at our September 18th letter from our uh, auditors with uh, Plant Moran, and it kind of just jogged my mind because they had made, made some comments about liabilities and, and, and then their audit stuff. Well, I, I, I <coughs> obligated myself today to call and talk to Amanda Kronk, I guess it is, and she assured me that uh, the problems that, the, that they have with the audit would have no effect on our bond and uh, issuing and, and performance. Uh, they thank me for, for, be, for being forbearance in this, but uh, and it just kind of struck me as you know, not talking about the same thing, but we're talking about the past and the future. So uh, I just wanted to thank uh, uh, them for cooperating and sharing with me, and uh, I think we're on the right track. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Uh, Mayor Rep. Um, first, just to uh, this might just um, to help our, our clerk here, there might be a, a little clerical on this template. Uh, it's on page packet page 32. It's on H.6. At the very bottom, it's, a, on, uh, it's 15 covenant with bondholders and the state of Michigan. It starts off the county hereby covenants with the holders of the bonds in the state of Michigan that it will not. Um, uh, after the issuance of bonds. I think throughout the, the rest of the document, it was the city. I'm not sure that that... It it's was right. corrected. Pardon me? That was corrected earlier today. Oh, oh good. Yes. Yeah, I was just... Uh, that's something I noticed when I was reading yep. through this. Um, so just a couple questions. Again, I think uh, City Manager Freed just mentioned um, when I was reading through this, this resolution, um, it's authorizing the city. Um, but it is, it says, in connection with the closure of the, of the plans. And again, this is um, to say okay, but you still have to go through that process. So thank you for addressing that, uh, first of all. Um, another question that I had is actually, in, I think in the, it's on page 33 of the packet. And it's uh, H.6, page 33, and it's number 17, authorized officer, and it's down below there. And again, um, it's B. It says the interest rates on the bonds shall not exceed 6%. And I know that, uh, uh, again, I like to question that threshold because here we're given a resolution of having a, an interest rate that's far above what we are hoping to get. Uh, I think you were mentioned the 3 to 4.5% range or <coughs> that type of thing. But um, is that, once we give this resolution, if you uh, approve it, um, is there any is there anything that we're going to do if the, if the market comes back with if 
that's up around 6% or 5.75%? So excellent question. Um, you brought this up in our last bonding agreement where it said 5%. This is standard boilerplate language. Uh, again, the mayor and I did not sign anything here 6% or 5% last time. We signed it at 2.58%, which saves the city, I believe, $350,000. Um, this is standard language. But if you read the comprehensive financial plan, which I went over at the last meeting, the comprehensive financial plan says that we must maintain a present value of at least 15%, which is required in a state statute, 689, section three. Um, so what this will do is, unless we achieve the interest rates we laid out and we don't achieve our present value, then we will not issue the bonds. So this document cannot be looked on its own. You have to look at it in the comprehensive financial plan which lays out the present value savings and required a state statute in Bolton 11 and overlays with the authorization. So we will not go to market unless we achieve the PV as required by state statute, which I don't think would be anything over 4.5. Okay, I just want to point that out. Um, on page 32, um, it's uh, number 11. My question is, you know, the use of the bond proceeds, um, when you issue, uh, issue the bonds, the debt there and the, the money comes in, um, the question I have is, number B, it says, you know, bond proceeds will go toward uh, paying the unfunded pension liability with MERS. But in review of how many different pension plans are different uh, categories, or some are at different um, uh, unfunded uh, or funded ratios, just say, let's say it's 52 million or 53 million, how is that gonna be allocated to the different uh, pension plans within there, is it all gonna be <coughs> lowest funded first, uh, up first, or how, how, does that, how is that gonna be done? Thank you, uh, Councilman Ward. I would encourage you to read the comprehensive financial plan I gave it the last uh, two meetings ago. The comprehensive financial plan uh, specifically said that it would be evenly dispersed throughout the funds to bring them all to equal funding levels. So again, refer back to the comprehensive financial plan where that was addressed. Okay, and let's see. Uh, The other question I have is on, um, it looks like item number 19 on page 34. Um, it has a little clause in here regarding municipal bond insurance. And again, um, if it's as if the city, you know, decides or needs to acquire the bond insurance, again, that's, do we have any idea or indication of, um, <coughs> if it is, of course, that's gonna be an additional cost on us on the city uh, to get those bonds more marketable. I'm just wondering if there's been any discussion or, or indication from uh, the guys that have been uh, informing you on this stuff. Are, are we gonna have, are we gonna potentially come across that? Again, I would encourage you to read the comprehensive business, business plan in which this <laughs> was addressed and factored into the cost issuance cost of the bonds. So you're intended on actually issuing with the- I will leave that up to the bond attorney and bond counsel on what they recommend and that will be dependent on market conditions. It is addressed in the comprehensive financial plan with placeholder. Okay, well that's something I just wanted to, do, uh, to, to get clarified here in this document. And uh, you, you guys kind of know where I stand on, on, on this. I wanted to point those things out uh, just to get this thing um, some, some more answers. Um, and again, on that clerical issue, um, I will not be supporting this as I've not been supporting the, uh, the other ones uh, for the matters that I've, uh, that I've already expressed to you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, uh, Councilmember Ashford. Is uh, you get down here on page 35? Is she acting clerk or is she the clerk? Or is that just for language? Is that I think that's just for language's purpose. Just who's there? Oh, so if it's not her, it could be someone else. It could be someone else. Correct. Okay, so no designee, just uh, okay. The acting clerk. Any other questions, comments? We will take the vote. Member Ward? No. Council Member Archibald? Yes. Council Member Ashford? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Harris? Yes. Council Member <coughs> Pemberton? Yes. Mayor Rep? Yes. That concludes our agenda. We have a couple of announcements. FEMA will be hosting a flood risk open house for the Lake Huron shoreline communities on November the 13th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the St. Clair County Administrative Office, Dodge Auditorium at 200 Grand River Avenue. Please check the city's website at www.porthuron.org for more meeting information. 
Additionally, leaf pickup at the curb began the week of October 21st, which was last week, and will run through the week of November 25th. A newsletter with more details was mailed to all residents and is also available on the city's website. Of course, all this is subject to weather, <coughs> which we hope uh, do, does what it's supposed to do. Right. Uh, is there anything else to come before the council? Yeah, Mayor Rep, um, yes. uh, actually, uh, I was missing an action last meeting, and um, I was at a convention, but uh, the Michigan Municipal League, uh, there were two subject matters that, that uh, they kind of encouraged us to bring back. Um, diversity and inclusion, of course, is, is things across the board here. It's always have been, probably always will be. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a de-biasing de uh, tip sheet that, uh, that is produced by the Michigan Department of Civil Rights. So I would like to actually give each one of you a copy because sometimes you can be biased and not even know it. And some of these things will put us as leaders uh, kind of like on our point as to what to look for and how you should be going about doing that. So um, I didn't want to give anything, you know, <coughs> long-winded on that because it speaks for itself. And then also the latest and the greatest uh, on the marijuana uh, preposition, this is what the league uh, also put out. And so it's not a whole lot of paragraphs and anything. It's just related to the law, just, just points. This is the high profile, most frequently asked question. And you will be knowledgeable of what that question is about according to the answers that they give. And so that's right in sync with uh, with uh, current data. Okay. Okay, and uh, and that's it. And, uh, and the next, and uh, Lee did tell me that uh, the city manager and the mayor, uh, you were all in line with the census, the 2020 yes. census coming up. And uh, and we were out, we, we're going to bring <coughs> some back. We got a meeting on uh, November 4th. So I'll bring you back something there to let us know what they're looking for because you know uh, the census is very important as far as politically wise and money wise coming into the state of Michigan and spent in particular for our county also. Yes, I have had conversations with the Michigan Municipal League on how we're going to publicize it and what we're going to do to make sure that people do realize how important it is. Yep. So that is forthcoming. Yep, she mentioned your name. So yes. that's why I, I held back because you can do that yourself. Okay. Yep. All right. And you're welcome, and I hope you feel better, too. I know it's just dragging. <laughs> so do I. I was glad it was a short meeting tonight, and <laughs> my voice held out. Is there anything else to come to Council? Yes, Council Yeah, Member just a couple things I'd like to share. Um, uh, first, you know, uh, this, past, this past weekend, um, I was able to, uh, at McMorrin uh, Main Arena, the uh, Port Huron Minor Hockey Association had their, um, what they call is kind of opening day or uh, um, introduction uh, for all the kids um, and it's both Saturday and Sunday and these you know nine ten year olds all the way up to you know 14 uh, 15 they uh, they got to uh, get their pictures taken they got to be introduced on the ice there with the new lights being off and and even the opposing teams who they're playing uh, they played their games um, uh, they got to be introduced the same way uh, going out with the spotlight is quite a f fantastic thing we have in our community here the use of that facility and, and for that organization, um, what, a, what an incredible impact. Um, the other thing is, uh, coming up this uh, Friday is, uh, uh, I'm very, very proud and I want to share our city that both of our high school teams, both Port Huron uh, Northern and Port Huron uh, uh, Big Reds, uh, not only they made the playoffs uh, in the high school football, so we have both of our high school teams uh, in the city of Port Huron represented in in a playoff pitcher. It's something of our whole community we should be very, very proud of. And the thing is, they happen to be playing against each other. Uh, and that's how it actually turned out. Uh, I think yesterday was the uh, uh, picking of who they have played. So this Friday, actually, at Memorial Stadium, uh, again, Port Huron Northern and Port Huron High are actually playing uh, in, in a playoff game. And I wanted to make sure I shared that. And then also, of course, we have uh, <coughs> Halloween coming up here uh, shortly, so I want to make sure everybody's uh, uh, safe, enjoyable. Uh, hopefully, the weather holds off, and, and we have uh, uh, all the all the different little neighborhoods and city and the kids. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful, wonderful time. But please be safe, and for any drivers or anybody out there, take extra caution. There's no need to rush, um, and um, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Bringing up Halloween, I'd like to thank Nancy Windsor and her staff because they put on a great uh, 
Halloween stroll this weekend and as well as all the volunteers because it would not be done without it. So something that I think everybody looks forward to every year. How long have they been doing that? Oh gosh. Probably. 35 years. Yeah, I was going to say at least 30 years. It, it grows each year. Oh, it it's does. Huge. It's huge. Yeah. Absolutely huge. Madam Mayor, just one point as well. Um, as part of our inclusive and diversity initiative, and we want to make sure that low income families have access uh, to uh, the Halloween stroll. Um, we authorized uh, late, uh, late last week that all the students at Cleveland and Roosevelt received free tickets to the stroll. Very good. Nice. Great. They get transportation. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you should say that. They got free transportation. Also. Well, Blue Water Transit runs free Blue transit. Blue Water Transit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, we should give that. Yeah. Okay. Anything else to come before the council this evening? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Meeting adjourned.